it's important to say right at the outset that this isn't something necessarily for everybody. It's not something doctors can do to patients. This is something that people have got to want for themselves. But I think one of the most remarkable findings of this whole stream of work from when we started in 2008 onwards has been the fact that we've discovered that there are a very high per percentage of people with type 2 diabetes who really hate their condition. And that was completely invisible to doctors and nurses because they told people they got a disease for life it was going to go downhill and they were going to have to, well, lose some weight and take these tablets. And yes, there might be complications, but we'll deal with them if they come up. Message of doom and gloom and helplessness and that learned helplessness was taken up by the patient. Surprise, surprise. And the fact of being told that there's a possibility of getting out of the diabetes, a surprisingly high proportion of people want to. Now, in direct, we sent letters, or rather not we, the GP sent letters from their practice, just cold calling letters. That usually results in about a 6% recruitment to a trial. We got 28%. And we know that more people would have stepped forward had it not been for the limitations on their time, because it was quite time expensive for participants to come up for the research visits. So if we just estimate that, say, a third of people would really want to do this, and we know that half are going to succeed in the first year, that puts numbers on this. Now, if we take out of the, uh, the diabetes costs for you and I as taxpayers, uh, one-sixth of the diabetes population, that's a huge amount of money. And moreover, we've created a huge number of people who now have a normal outlook for health. No risk of amputation or blindness or stroke or heart attack over and above the background risk. And so the benefit is huge for the people who are able to do it. So that's how I would see this. At the moment, we don't have a way of magicking the fat away so we could do it to everybody. This is something that's wanted by a surprisingly high proportion of people. In direct, we have really quite a high proportion of people from the lowest socioeconomic group, over 20%. Now, that's quite remarkable in this sort of lifestyle intervention study, because usually you don't get any buy-in. But here we have evidence that, yes, it's across the socioeconomic uh, spectrum. How well did they do? They did just as well as the people in social class one. And there's a real message in there. Now, time will tell whether it's more difficult for them to keep the weight off in the long term because it, there are some factors that are genuinely at play. For instance, if it's unsafe to leave your house at night, it, it's difficult to go for a walk after your evening meal. Whereas if you're strolling around a leafy suburb, that's much easier. So there may be some de details that emerge, but it's very surprising that it was really less trouble to do it in, for instance, St Anthony's is in Newcastle, which is the third poorest ward in the whole of the UK. And they did very well. On the other hand, there were some areas of affluent Newcastle that were a bit of a trouble to, uh, to run. I think once someone has received the, the life sentence of type 2 diabetes, they're in a different frame and the motivation to get out of it is quite considerable. And that was very nicely described by David Paul, my patient speaking yesterday, of the, the intense drive to keep his weight down. And it was a real battle for him. It is a real battle for him. But he's engaged with it because it's such a powerful motivator. I think the prevention program is very good. The early results, as uh, presented by Jonathan Valamchi yesterday, are striking. And getting over four kilograms weight loss uh, in the first year was a major triumph. And so I think the prevention program is wonderful. But I wouldn't expand what we're doing of a very vigorous uh, medical operation to get rid of the diabetes. Because if you develop type 2 diabetes, it's a medical emergency. You have accumulated something in your body that you need to get rid of. Now, if that was a cancer, and you were told you had to have an operation, well, you take two months off work, that'd be normal, you'd just do it. The concept of doing a similar thing with type 2 diabetes is not yet there. 
and yet the possibility is there and people have demonstrated that clearly they will. It does need a shift in thinking, but then, you know, that's how changes happen in medicine. And it's always a bit of a battle to get a change in thinking, because I've been unlucky enough to have to do it in other areas as well. And it takes, you know, a good five years from first presentation. Now, I demonstrated these findings in 2011 in a small study, but one that was eye-opening because it showed all the mechanisms and the possibility. And here we are, uh, what, um, 2019, eight years later, and it's just breaking through into major consciousness. So paradigm shifts take a long time. There's no doubt that this is the beginning of a long story. What we've shown is that type 2 diabetes is a reversible condition. It's a simple condition, half a gram of fat in the pancreas, get rid of that, diabetes goes away in the early stages. That is a profound breakthrough in thinking and being able to tell people you've got diabetes however the good news is so and so from here we're going to learn much more about optimal ways of doing it there may be other better approaches now we've hit on one that's practical and very good um, but all of this can be improved and so we've got a lot to learn and there are a few details of what's actually going on inside the pancreas which need to be sorted out into the future so Yes, this is going to run and run.